So who, who do we need? <laughs> well, I'm not going to tell other, well, he just kind of ruined one of them. We need, um, we need to really check real quick. Count how many men, and one of them does have to look like Hank Hill. That's the one. That we I need five people, one of them needs to look like Hank Hill. I'm not going to tell you what characters you are. You know what? Yeah, you're kind of bald. Ooh. <laughs> no, wait, Hank Hill has hair. No, what about Hank Hill? Hey, close enough. <laughs> Yes, yes. Yeah, thank you. However, however, we have to get some people who haven't done this yes. yet. Okay, um, hurry, yes, there you go. Uh, uh, green shirt in the back, green shirt in the back. Yeah, yeah. come on up here, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah. If you uh, didn't get a chance, don't worry. We'll wait. We, we might have time for one more. Okay, and I do my iPhone. We could do, we could, Godfather. Oh no. Okay, I'll read Godfather. that. Godfather. I'll read that. We have one more just in case. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we'll trade off. Okay. Okay. okay we can do it. All right. So, <clears throat> this is a story called Ode to Hipster. Oh. I'm glad I'm not in this. <laughs> the subtitle is Art in CL. <laughs> The sun shone over Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris as a plane owned by the America Fuck Yeah Flight Company America Fuck Yeah was about to land. The plane landed and the front door of the airport opened, welcoming passengers. You're gonna have to choose who is who. Welcoming the passengers. Among them were five individuals. Hank Hill. Obviously you. Come on. Or Howie. I am mean. <laughs> Brian Griffin. Oh, no. He's like a month get a martini. <laughs> Solid Snake. <laughs> and Finn from Adventure Time. Oh. <laughs> they were all walking around in the airport in their new clothes, you see. The five of them had recently become very good friends and had reinvented themselves as hipsters. <laughs> Jackass. <laughs> Hank Hill was wearing a t-shirt with a band on it so obscure that most people would assume it's something about insurance. <laughs> he was also wearing a green woolly hat with gold wrap written on it in huge gold letters. His pants were three-fourth torn shirts with a wooden chain on them and no pockets because pockets were too mainstream. <laughs> He was listening to the Diglett Brigade's Unsung Sons. <laughs> Apparently, I Am Mean was wearing an inverse silver plan t-shirt, except all the band members were replaced with Katawa Shoujo characters reimagined as female movie stars from the 1920s. What? <laughs> The front of his t-shirt was covered in old spaghetti, which concealed a dead mouse autograph. Wow. He was wearing a transparent fingerless glove made out of poly polyethylene. He was wearing a My Little Pony Generation 2 hat, very bright hat, which glowed in the dark. Yes, it does have twice. Unlike Hank, Ignatius' sandals were of the Greek Greco-Roman variety. His pants were three meters long and dragged long after him, concealing his sandals. He was listening to some progressive dubstep metal on his Zoom. <laughs> Brian Griffin was blasting drone metal on the speakers which were permanently fused to the outside of his eyes. <laughs> his nose was covered with piercings which diverted attention from his black gothic leather cubic zirconium encrusted ghouls and goblins t-shirt. <laughs> Brian wasn't wearing any pants as they were too mainstream. <laughs> Instead he was wearing boxers with the Norwegian flag on them. His hat was a PVC skater hat worn sideways, washed in cocoa leaves to give it a nice coffee smell. He was wearing an blindingly yellow high heels and one black blue boot used in BDSM roleplay to give that dark and edgy, but not mainstream edgy, look on it. He wore orange shades. <laughs> Solid Snake, on the other hand, was wearing an old smelly and itchy cotton sweater with Delivery Rocks, with a Z, written on it along with the British flag. The sweater was hand-knitted by his grandma. His attire also included 26 centimeter thick glasses, an old monster hat, sunflower in his back pocket tied to a Rubik's Cube. <laughs> Finn, on the other hand, wore a style combination of the traditional hipster with something new. He had an ironic hipster mustache tattooed just above his upper lip, pacifier tied to a zinc necklace, hat with a little umbrella with the forest and the trees written on it, pipe in his mouth, DX ball t-shirt, 
Blue and orange with pink highlights, kilt. Trainers twice as big as his feet. Old school pantyhose, scarf, and low rise dream or jeans. He was listening to Tiger to Shoes. All five of them approached the nearby coffee shop. Oh, they've left the airport apparently. Uh, <laughs> conveniently placed to which the passengers the thirst for some caffeine. <coughs> Sorry, I think I hate myself. <laughs> A lot of things do. Would you like some cafe? The kind of. Uh, I, we need some. Can you do a French accent for us, Kendall? Yeah. We, we need some cafe. Or would you like some cafe? Would you like some cafe? The kind of French man working at the counter asked. Main Street and Garbage, Snake exclaimed, and cracked open an old sandwich which had liquefied by this point, and it hoped it tried hard as possible not to vomit. All five of them laughed and left the airport, since tourists pretended to prefer using taxis. The group decided to walk around Paris on foot. Soon they noticed the cafe is so small and concealed behind a cherry tree in an alley God knows where in Paris, and decided to sit there and rest a little. The owner and his daughter's eyes glowed as they saw the customers for the first time in six months. What will you have, messieurs? What will you have, messieurs? The kind daughter asked politely. Rats! Hank, Crystal Pepsi mixed with baking soda, please, Hank ordered. <laughs> Luckily, the cafe was so old that it still had some old bottles of Crystal Pepsi left. <laughs> I'd like some stale absinthe, I am mean said. For me, a sax on the beach with frog legs in it, and I want Madagascar frogs, damn it. How many of those common frogs, Brian Griffin impertinently said. Uno ver champagne, s'il vous plaît, solid six said. <laughs> yeah, I speak French, bitches. Don't you, <laughs> don't you mean vera de champagne, the waitress said puzzled. No, I want an empty glass. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're good. We're good. Oh, if you say so. If my adventure, if my adventureness may interject, I'd like some cherry vodka mixed with cockroach intestines and tree bark. <laughs> the owner's daughter suddenly wished they didn't have customers as she wished to prepare the drinks. The five of them started to have a conversation about their hipsterism. <laughs> this is a little long. It's a little long. So what kind of music do you guys listen to right now, Hank inquired. Drone metal is always bitch, Ryan said with a voice full of hipster rage that his new hipster friends listen to music much like mainstream douchebags. <laughs> Currently I'm listening to, and I cannot even pronounce this, by Ingrid, Finn said. Yes. I, two S photo by Ingrid. I don't know. Two S photo. I guess, whatever. I don't know. Hank burst into redneck laughter. <laughs> Boy, you mean right. Traditional African music mixed with industrial post-funk is where it's at. Don't make me laugh. If you don't listen to transgressive, interior, nuclear, minstrel, jazz, anti-punk, you're a mainstream casual snake, explained in the middle of the conversation. <laughs> Except you're wrong, solid. Antique, progressive, post-naturalistic house swing with drum and bass and electro-punk elements is the best music, Ignatius says in response to snake's words. <laughs> Breathe deep, sir. <laughs> this is so very intensely hipster. Refrigerator sounds for the win, Brian yelled. <laughs> Finn then elongated his freakishly long arms and slapped the rest on the head. Calm down, he said. We're supposed to be friends. Now let's talk about something else, like religion, for example. I... <laughs> I I've a lot of posers that converted to Buddhism lately. I'm a Norse paganist. In the name of Thor, Brian said, impaling, impaling a nearby cat. <laughs> I can't believe Peggy got me into Christianity. That's like the most mainstream religion. I'm into voodoo, Hank said. <laughs> Scientology here, I am, Mean said. Seriously? Finn said as the rest looked at Mean with a grim, disappointed face. Oh no, I made my own cult version of Scientology. I worship Lord Zeno's second son, Yimu. <laughs> I can't believe you guys have only one religion, Snake said. You can't, you have to mix religions to get which one you want. It's called s syncretism. My religion is the ancient Greek one mixed with Judaism, Hinduism, ad Aborigines beliefs, and Shintoism. It's perfect for me. The conversation was quite heated as the waitress gave everyone their drinks and Snake his empty glass. <laughs> Anything new with you gentlemen, Finn asked. I divorced Peggy and left her with Bobby. Since the judge was a hipster too, with similar tastes like mine, she had to pay me child support. Too bad the judge is a poser, copycat, wannabe hipster, so I had to change my tastes for the third time this week. I quit my job as a propane salesman and became a hexane salesman, much more obscure. <laughs> I agree with America being too mainstream, but don't you think France is mainstream too? I'll move to Denmark, that's obscure enough for me, Brian said. 
I don't know when this happened, but they're severely changed to talking about where they live. I prefer Eastern Europe. It's obscure enough without being a third world shithole, Ignatius like said. <laughs> Sorry. Ignatius! I am mean. Oh! This is awful. Yes, it is. <laughs> no, I did not write it. <laughs> no. We All found of these were found on fanfiction.net with no more than five minutes of search. In fact, we will just end this here because it just gets worse. <laughs> yeah. 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 I really want to move on. I think you should go. I think you can make it. I'm, I'm sorry. Right? You can do it! Dude, we got time. We got time. Do it! Do it! Do it! Do it. Do it. Yeah. Leaving your country for another is too mainstream, Snake said. Anyway, favorite cartoon? Mine's Bartok the Magnificent. I only watch it ironically, of course. Ditto, Finn said. Generation 2, My Little Pony, Ignatius said. Animation is too mainstream, Hank said. Boku no P I mean Planet Sketch. Yeah, that's what I said. That's what I said. What? Boku no Pico. Boku no Pico. Apparently that's a point. That would be 679 euro. You ordered some obscure shit and that's going to cost you. Ha, uh, she actually thinks we're gonna pay. Paying is too mainstream. Snake said it stabbed her in the knee. <laughs> With an arrow? With an arrow? <laughs> the reason being, is, this is in parentheses, the back is too mainstream. I'll call the police, but before she can reach their phone, the five were long gone. And that is the end. Thank you! <laughs> A lot of there, this happening. There is, there is a sequel. Just, just uh, no, 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 I'm gonna go ahead and save you the trouble. Here's the ending. Adventure time. They blow up the world, and Adventure Time happens. That's it. That's it. This is a prequel to Adventure Time. Yes. Yes. I wish I was lying to you. You can sit down. You can sit down. Another thing to make this get out of the airport and walk to Paris because it's like miles away. We actually had to take a train in Paris, so. <laughs> but that's because public transport is just too mainstream. <laughs> well, it's not like an hour walking then. All right, all right. Mine is so mainstream. All right, okay.